Hello everybody, so today I thought I would make a little video about how I made this army and my thought process behind it and some key takeaways I'd like to give anybody who would be interested. So I'd say my first tip would be to decide what kind of paint scheme you want. Do you want a really detailed, really uh, fancy paint scheme with multiple highlights and uh, blending and nice shading uh, so that you can really be proud of? Maybe that's almost more for like collecting, or do you just want just like a really basic paint scheme that's going to take less time that you can play with faster? And I think it's important to figure out what you want ahead of time. So. You know, you can buy, you know, all the paints necessary and then also think about how much time you have to paint and, you know, you, if you really even want to spend that much time painting. But I will say that, you know, just finishing an army to any standard takes a good deal of effort and patience. So there really isn't a silver bullet that can just or process that can make your army done in like a day. Uh, <laughs> at least that's my opinion. So that's tip number one. And then my next tip would be to experiment and paint a test model before you commit, before you start painting squadrons. Uh, paint a single basic troop, just a single model, and just really see if you like how it looks. And don't be afraid to repaint it or experiment and really think about every little detail and just make sure you like it and experiment and do research and find other paint schemes online and then you know com compare and contrast. Uh, just kind of go crazy and experiment. Just don't worry about if you don't like the model because it's a lot better to just experiment on one model and know what you want before you start and then then having to just start and then keep changing so I kinda just started I had a basic pretty strong idea of what I wanted uh, but you know over time I would kind of experiment with new with new uh, colors for for minor details and then I would update my paint scheme and then the whole process would evolve so you're continually learning but the more you can know what you want ahead of time it can really save a lot of time and hassle. I know for this army, one thing I would have done differently is the basing. Uh, the way I did it was I painted, I painted the the base, the sand on the base with sandry dust and washed it with Agrax Earthshade and then dry brushed it with Ushapti Bone. But I did not realize that on the really big base for the truck the wash kind of acts differently because I'm using a bigger brush to apply more wash and it kind of really soaked up the wash so it really has a darker appearance than the other bases so in retrospect I would have I would have just used a darker color like graveyard earth and then dry brushed Zandri dressed Zandri dust over that and then Ushapti bone over that but you know, and I could have potentially thought about this on a test model. So, if you can figure all this out on one model, then then you can have a far more coherent looking army and be just happier with the overall result. My next tip would be only buy one box of models before you buy the next. So, when I started this army, I started with just 10 boys and then I painted those and then I bought another box and then I painted those and then I bought another box and then I painted those and then I bought it and I bought a, the Ludas and I painted those and then I bought the knobs and I painted those so I just bought one box at a time so I never had like a massive to-do list and I think it's very it feels really good to know that you're only one unit away from having your entire to-do list done you know I see people that have this massive to do pile and it's just hundreds and hundreds of models and it 
it, it becomes very overwhelming, and I used to kind of do that, and I would never, I really don't want to do that again. So if you can do that, I think it really helps psychologically. My next tip would be to paint in batches of around five or so. For me, I, I was kind of going with a, a pretty good quality with this army with with everything being highlighted once and having shading. I I, uh, I experimented with like a batch of 10, but it's very, it's very, it's a little exhausting. Just, it's a lot of redundancy, just having to paint the same thing on 10 guys. And I find with five guys, you're getting, you know, you're finishing, like let's say the skin on all five guys m relatively quickly, and then you can do move on to something else. So that way you're, you're getting variety of what you're painting. You're not just this assembly line that's for like 30 guys. I think that's too much for me. And then my next tip would be, be very patient and look forward to the completion of a single batch of models. And it just, it feels good to know that you're just, you're close to finishing up a unit. You're you're always somewhat close to finishing up a unit. My next tip would be, after painting up one type of unit, switch it up and paint up another type of vehicle to add variety. Another type of vehicle or, or monster or something. So maybe I would paint like a unit of boys, then I'd paint like the Ludas, and then I would paint more boys, and then I'd paint the knobs, and then I'd paint more boys. So that way you're just, you're constantly refreshing the process. You're not just painting the same thing over and over and over and over again. So anything you can do to switch it up, I think really makes the process and the hobby more exciting. My next tip would be have good audiobooks, videos, or music to make the painting process more enjoyable. I would like to listen to YouTube videos or podcasts and audiobooks and uh, sometimes music. It's all good. Whatever you prefer, I think I think it's good to experiment, so maybe try audiobooks, uh, fiction, nonfiction, uh, music. Just just switch it up, just add more variety. I think it can really really improve, increase the the enjoyment you get from the hobby. My next tip would be take breaks often when working for too long. I find that when working too long, I just want to finish whatever it is I'm doing. And then I just kind of rush and try to just cut corners just so I can quit and having, having finished what I was working on. But I find that after I take a break, I'm far more refreshed and I'm willing to, and the quality is far more consistent after my break. My next tip is small details can really make the whole model pop so if you have a key character or just a sergeant or something if you can really you know maybe paint the eyes in and paint little details or just add little flourishes or decorations it really it really sells the model i think possibly more than you might realize uh, just, it's interesting, just little little details can really increase the appearance of an entire model. So I think it's definitely worth the time to, to pick those out, especially on a character or a more notable unit. And finally, if you can follow this process long enough, your satisfaction from having completed this and being able to say you did this and just appreciating all the detail and the, the work you put into it, it's very satisfying. And people will will comment on your work and compliment you and then it'll be it'll be a good time and you'll be very proud to put these on the table or in your display case. And I will say that the whole process is it, this is a long process and even if you have a really basic paint scheme and just a really simple way you're applying the paint, which is like 
single base coats and maybe like a wash or something, it, it's going to take time. It's probably going to take longer than you think it will, honestly. Uh, I mean, this is just a very time-intensive activity of painting models. So, I mean, I, I don't care if you're using contrast or whatever, it still is going to take time. So it it'll and it will probably take longer than you think. That's my experience. And finally, this is all a learning process and you will continue to improve. So if you start, you know, just know that you're gonna improve and maybe you're gonna try new things and experiment and you're gonna evolve and your process isn't gonna improve, you're gonna become more efficient, you're gonna be more confident and just the way you paint is going to be more confident and you will gain more confidence as you practice more and I would say try to overlook any small things you don't like or little mistakes well, of course you can fix them but sometimes I make little mistakes and then I think it would really it would really uh, reduce the quality of the model but I find after everything's done you rarely notice mistakes or or uh, maybe areas where the paint got too thick or where the primer acted kind of strangely. You rarely notice little little things like that. So I guess try to keep a big picture perspective. Uh, be patient, be organized, and have fun. So these are my tips. I hope this helps, and have a great day.